Yo, we're on the Riverstone house and the roofing iron has just been delivered. You guys have done an amazing job. This house here is a combination of a truss roof and a rafter roof. Perfect time to make a video all about how to install a roof. So while these guys are raising the roof, you can also help us raise our subscribers. We're on the road to 10K. Go ahead, click subscribe. Let's start with the framing or the trusses. So these are our trusses. This whole wing of the building, they're all identical. They get made at a factory and delivered to site, ready to go. So what we'll make sure has happened before they come to site, we've stood the frames. The frames are braced and plumb and they're ready to have the trusses dropped right on top. We'll also install safety nets and the scaffold and then we will start standing trusses. So standing them literally means peeling them out of the pack, standing them up and then putting them in place. One of the things you'll do before you stand them as well is you will go and mark where they're sitting. On the top plate down in here we will go along and mark a running measurement. You want to go from one end of the building all the way to the other. You want to make sure that your running measurement is working before you start standing the trusses. The reason we do that is you don't want to get three quarters of the way through the pack. They're all tacked in place and you realize that you didn't allow for something and now you have to untack them and move them all. It's easier to readjust your measurements on the top plate when there's nothing in the way before starting to stand them. Once they've all tacked in place, we will pick a starting point and we'll get that first truss plumb and we'll brace that up and then you can start bracing all of your other trusses off that first one that's plumb. I reckon standing trusses is a minimum to usually three man job. Uh, depends on size of house, size of trusses. They can be quite big and quite tall. You know, these trusses here are taller than my arm height at the highest point. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, so now ideally not only is the end plumb, but all of our trusses are spaced as per the plan and they're all plumb and they're all braced together. They would have been tacked off as we are doing it. Tack means just one nail in there. The nail hasn't been hit home. We do that in case you do need to move it. Once you've confirmed that you're happy with that and often you might have some end units that you need to put in. So you'd go along and you would like permanently fix off all your trusses. Uh, you'd also follow this, the fixing schedule. So for example, it might need CPC 40s, CPC 80s, could need Z nails. Sometimes we even use hangers, commonly called joist hangers, where one truss is butting into another truss. So we've put all our hardware in as per the schedule. Next thing we will do is the purlins. Purlins are these horizontal members, so trusses are going this way. Purlins go horizontally and they are spaced at a maximum of 900. They catch the fixing for your roofing iron. Usually for purlins we will use 3x2 or 70x45. Sometimes, depending on the wind zone and the specs, that could be upgraded to 4x2. Or there was a time last year where we upgraded to 4x2 just to keep a job moving. Here's another trick for beginners, is if your truss pack comes nice and stacked evenly and your apexes all line up, you can mark your purlins before you unpeel them and then your measurements work out. Got to make sure that the pack lines up perfectly. Can sometimes be more marking around than just running a string line end to end. So you'd mark where your purlins are going, you'd then go along and you'd gun nail them in and then you'd also purl and screw them in. Now we know the difference about an impact driver versus drill, you'd use that to screw off all of your purlin screws. At the same time as doing purlins, we'll install these valley boards. A valley is where two roofs meet and, and there's an internal junction and they're sending the water down. Basically the way a roof works is it catches the water and everything works to send the water down to the ground. And we'll also install the fascia. So we've done purlins, fascia, valley. We're now ready to call the roofer. If you've got skylights, like here, we've got about five on this job. They will also get installed first. Roofers love those to go in first. So now that the roof has arrived, first thing they'll do is paper. As well as wrapping the outside framing in the building, we wrap the roof. So imagine a piece of corrugated iron. It heats up during the day and then the air cools down overnight. Then the cold air hits the surface, the warm, moist air under 
condensates on that and then it will drip down, hit the paper, roll out under the roof instead of going into your house. So that's paper's main purpose. This is assuming you're doing a corrugated iron roof. Majority of our homes are corrugated iron, so this process is all about a corrugated iron roof. Fun fact, did you know that I was actually a roofer before I was a builder? I, on my Yowie in Canada, I did a year on the roofs. That's how I got into construction. That's how I worked out. I love being on building sites. I love being up in the air. I love driving past sites saying, I did that house. So most of the sheets will come pre-cut. Uh, the roofing boss, Sean or Daniel, will come and measure up and they will work out the sheet lengths, they'll work out things like the ridges, they'll put an order in and that all gets dropped off. And so roofers will paper and then they'll start peeling out those packs. And then when they start coming to the valleys, they lay the sheets out and they work out cuts. They'll cut them on the ground, make them nice and mint, take those up, start installing those as well. The roofing sheets are all screwed down with roofing screws. They're like a hex head tech screw colored to the roof with a neoprene washer. Even the screws are fascinating. They have a metal cutting head and then they have a timber thread, but then at the top they have a cross thread to pull the metal and the neoprene washer in nice and tight. So that one screw is doing so much. Uh, then we do barge flashings, then we do ridge caps, and then we do roof shut. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>